योगी वही है सच्चा जिसने अहंकार को मारा हो अहंकार को मारा हो पीकर जहर सभी के दिल का पीकर जहर सभी के दिल का जीवन खूब सवारा हो जीवन खूब सवारा हो योगी वही है सच्चा जिसने अहंकार को मारा हो अहंकार को मारा हो ओम शांति एंड वेलकम टू दिस ब्यूटीफुल रिट्रीट दैट वी हैव इन अनुभूति रिट्रीट हाउस न्यू विजन फॉर अ न्यू वर्ल्ड एंड इन ऑर्डर टू गो इन टू दैट न्यू वर्ल्ड द फर्स्ट विजन इट्स ओके नो प्रॉब्लम द फर्स्ट विजन दैट बाबा हैज changed within us for the new world is of consciousness first baba says that we have to change our consciousness from body to soul from ego to soul so the more we bring the shift in our consciousness will be able to elevate ourselves for the new world we are able to change our vision towards the self and towards others so baba says bringing this change in the consciousness is when i am able to understand myself in a better way as we heard in baba's murli today again and again baba was as if very in a incognito way also and so in an incognito way and in a very loving manner baba was signaling become soul conscious Baba was talking in today's murli about each and every vice and especially body consciousness lust and anger and then baba said that pandavas do not get three fit land as well why because in the world where there is kauru government and yadavs they have so much of greed that they have taken away all the land so each and every vice baba was showing the extremes of those vices and in that also royal ego knowing and understanding because until and unless i do not know what really go is i won't be able to bring about a change in myself so when we talk of ego how would you define ego how would you define ego yes we very easily are able to point out and give a comment for others oh this person is very ego conscious even if the person has not said anything not even uttered a word but still we are able to identify ego in them what is the definition of ego we all know the synonyms of ego i pride etc but the definition how would you define it yes
Yes. Mm. Wrong image. Wrong idea. How do we develop that? So we, today we'll see the process of how we develop it. So that we can bring in our awareness and we are able to overcome it. The normal and natural way that we do one thing constantly is thinking. We generate so many thoughts throughout the day. We are constantly thinking. And as is our thoughts, so is our feelings. Therefore it is said, watch out for your thoughts as they become your feelings. For the feelings, because that becomes your that becomes your attitude. And watch out for the attitude because that's going to shape your personality, behavior, actions. And as is your actions, as is your behavior, that will be your personality. And as is your personality, so will be your destiny. Therefore it is said, destiny is in your hands. Isn't it? Destiny is in your hands. This whole process is my own process. It is not somebody else's process. Till now, religion taught us as is your action, so is your destiny. Religion always taught us, as is your action, so will be your destiny, fortune. Right? Psychology taught us, as is your thoughts, so will be your actions, so will be your destiny. So we can say, psychology ta taught us, as is your thoughts, so will be your destiny. Right? What does spirituality te teach us? Spirituality te uh, takes us to the roots, very deeply, where, we, where it is connected. What makes us think? For supposing there are two people, Mr. A and Mr. B. For Mr. A, we may say he's a very nice person, a very good person, good hearted, kind hearted, etc. And for Mr. B, we may say, watch out. Don't go too near him. He's not a good person. Hmm? So what shapes our thoughts, positive or negative? Consciousness, perception. As we see them, as we perceive them, if we perceive somebody's qualities, then we have positive thoughts about him, we have positive thoughts about that person. But if I start seeing the weaknesses, we have negative thoughts about that person. So as I perceive, so will be my thoughts. But what gives me that perception? Why do I perceive in somebody qualities? Supposing there is only one person, and there are two people who perceive that one person, 
A would say, this person is very nice. C would say, B is not nice. Person is the same. One is having positive opinion, another has a negative opinion. Why? What did they perceive? The perception was on the basis of hmm, the perception was on the basis of experience, on the basis of experience. When they interact, when they interacted, there was some or the other positivity. So the person saw his qualities, saw the goodness. But the other person, when they interacted with each other, there were some weaknesses that came up. And because of the weaknesses, the experience was not good. So that was the perception for him. Right? So B is the same person, A interacted with B and there were values, both interacted on the basis of values, so there was a positive experience. B and C, when they interacted, there were some weaknesses that came in between, so they had a negative experience. And because of this negative experience, their perceptions were different. The thinking process was different from one another, right? So what came in the interaction, so that I got that experience, it was either values or weakness. So this is completely my system. This is my system. And those values or those weaknesses, what triggered them? Supposing you are working and you have a boss who behaves very rudely, but still you would be polite. You won't start using your weaknesses, getting angry on him. But if he's your junior, and he does something wrong, you immediately get irritated, angry on that person. So what triggers these values and weaknesses? What triggers these values and weaknesses? Hmm? Consciousness? No. Huh? Sanskars? Which aspect of the sanskars? Which aspect of our personality or which aspect of our self? This is my complete self. Huh? Identity? Hmm? It is my belief, belief system. I believe him to be my boss, so I would not react. I believe that he is my junior, so I can say anything to him. Right? So, belief triggers the values or the weaknesses. I'll give you an example. There is a company, and in the company, there is union problems going on. Now, it happens so that one day, the CEO of the company 
was in his office and the union leader comes to see him. So he goes up to the secretary and says, look, I want 10 minutes. I want to meet him 10 minutes. So the secretary says, please be seated, I'll get you the time. She goes to the CEO and she tells him that the union leader wants to see you 10 minutes. What time can I give him? So the CEO said, the union leader at this time, early morning, first thing, will spoil my day. He must be having some demands. Tell him to come in the evening. So the secretary goes out, tells the union leader, can you come in the evening? So the union leader said, okay, no problem. He goes away. He comes in the evening at the given time at five o'clock before uh, leaving for home. But there were some guests and the CEO had to leave before time. He had some guests at home, which he had to meet. So he left immediately at three o'clock, four o'clock. So five o'clock when this union leader comes, he's not there. So the secretary says, can you come tomorrow morning? So he says, okay, no problem. Because the CEO had to leave, there were some guests, so he just went away. Okay. So next day morning, the union leader comes, but there was a board meeting. So the CEO was busy. So the secretary said, look, this was just sudden. The board meeting came up. So he's busy. Can you come in the evening? So again, he comes in the evening and he had the board meeting went on the whole day. Still, he was not free from that board meeting. So the secretary said, I'm so sorry. I don't know how long this is going to go on. Will you be able to wait till then? So the union leader said, no, no problem. And he kept a leave for 10 days and went away. After 10 days, it was coincidence that the CEO was also entering to the gate, main gate, and the union leader was also entering to the gate. So that was the time when he saw him and he remembered that this person had come to meet me 10 days back and after that he was not to be seen. I hope he's not creating some problems. So he goes to his office and immediately asks the secretary, can you call upon that person? So the secretary immediately called upon that person with that union leader and said that you wanted to meet him, but you were away for 10 days. And when you had come, he was very busy. So you could not make up, have that meeting. So please, you can meet now. So the union leader said, but there is, I have nothing to say. Whatever I had to say that day is over. So nothing to say, but still meet, meet him. He wants to meet you. Okay, he goes inside and seeing the CEO, so the CEO heartily welcomes him. Come, I'm so sorry I couldn't meet you when you had come 10 days back. I was very busy with the guest and the board meetings. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, that I could not meet you. 
So this union leader said, no problem. So the CEO says, so what was the matter? So this union leader says, but it's over. I have no matter now. Anyway, it's good that if it is over, but at least can I just know why you had come? But there is no point in sharing now, says the union leader. When everything is over, why do I need to tell you about it? So the CEO says, okay, it's good that if it is over, but at least I would like to know. So he insists, I would like to know. So the union leader said, 10 days back when I came here, it was my son's wedding and I wanted to invite you. So I had come with the wedding card so that we could receive your blessings and we could have the honor of your coming to the wedding. But now the wedding is over. So, and you have no time for us. Sorry to say that. The union leader said, sorry to say that. Now I realize you don't have time for us. Now, what will be the destiny? In the company, problems or solutions? Problems. Why these problems are there? Hmm? So the CEO was, he felt very sorry about it and he said, I'm so sorry. But he couldn't say anything else. Now, why did he not meet that person? Oh, it was the guest, oh, it was this, oh, it was the um, meetings, etc., etc. Was that the cause that he did not meet him? Huh? Yes, the first day when he came, and that belief which came in between, in between, union leader at this time definitely must have some demands. He'll spoil the day. Let, tell him to come in the evening. But if that moment, if he would have challenged his own belief and would have met him 10 minutes, very happily he would have presented that invitation um, for the wedding. And if he would have got up and congratulated him, hugged him and said, I'll definitely, I'll try to find time and even for five minutes, I'll definitely come. If he was not able to go, if he had some work, some meetings, but if he would, if he would have sent somebody with a token of love, what would have been the destiny? Problems or solutions? Solutions. So, religion tells us, as is your action, so is your destiny. Psychology says, as is your thought, so is your action, so is your destiny. Spirituality tells us, as is your belief, so will be your thoughts, so will be your destiny. So, in short, we can say, spirituality tells us, as is your Belief, so will be your destiny. Belief shapes our destiny. Right? That is why in today's age, children, when they are staying with their parents, sometimes when they see certain beliefs of the parents, they want this way and that way and this is how it should be, everything according to what their belief is. Then the children would tell their parents, 
You need to change these beliefs if you want to stay together. If you won't change your beliefs, then we would change our location. Isn't it? And since childhood, we have been changing our beliefs from time to time on the basis of our experiences. We have been constantly changing them. But there are some very strong beliefs that we hold on to and we are not we are not letting it go. That creates all the problems. Sometimes, when we hold on to those beliefs, there is deep attachment to that beliefs. This is what I believe and I won't give up. Because I've had a lot of experiences, so I can't give up. So, very deep attachment to certain beliefs which we hold on to. And that is where there is an illusion. We started to stay in that illusion. We start to stay in that illusion. And we feel still, I'm right, I'm not wrong. Sometimes, when certain parents, they feel, no, we are right for this. So that is the illusion. They think they are right, but time demands a change. So that is the illusion. And when anybody tries to tell them change, there is a resistance. Sorry, our experiences tell me we cannot change this. And that's when it is said that habits, they become their habits and which die deep. So when they resist, that resistance creates a fear. Fear of being challenged. Supposing that they are still holding on to that belief, they are deeply attached to that belief. And what if somebody would challenge them? What if somebody would criticize them? What if they would meet a failure? So wherever this fear is, who is having fear? Fear of being criticized. Who is Having this fear of being criticized, that is ego. It is the ego that has that fear. Fear of being challenged. What if somebody comes up and challenges me? So who is being challenged? Ego is being challenged. So therefore people tell them, let go. Let go. What do we have to let go? What do we have to let go? Let go. Let go. Now, what do we have to let go? Those beliefs that we are holding on to. Let go that belief. Otherwise, it is really going to harm you. According to time, we need to change. We have to change. Time demands a change. And what do we have to change? Our beliefs, which I'm holding on to and I'm trying to cross this time, cross this time, on the basis of the old beliefs, this is where 
it clashes with others' beliefs. So when both the beliefs are in different directions and they clash, this is what we call as ego clash. So now, how would we define ego? Ego means the attachment to a wrong image of myself or the belief that I hold for myself. The belief that I hold about myself. That is ego. That is ego. Where every time we use this word I, I know, I understand. So wherever this big I comes, I know everything, I know about this, I know this, I know that. That means I'm holding on to that consciousness or that belief, I know everything. So this is what creates problems, creates, when two person, two identities, both are holding on to their own beliefs, which are not in tune with one another, what happens? Clash. So that it is said that in today's world there are so many ego clashes and there are no solutions to this ego clash. And Baba is giving us a new vision. And that new vision is completely a different belief about how the world is changing. And in this changing world, I need to change myself. Isn't it? I need to change myself. Because if I can't change, like if I can't bring that change in me, if I'm not willing to give up those old beliefs, because time is changing very fast. And if I still stay in that past, holding on to those beliefs, I cannot move on. And in today's world, what happens? The practical thing that we see is, everyone, everyone is trying to change others. You change, you have to change. You have to change. You can't go like this. We are telling others, not realizing, I also need to change somewhere. Isn't it? And that is why there are so many misunderstandings, so many clashes, which are unresolved. And then it gives bitter experiences. And when there are bitter experiences, the entire self gets disturbed, feelings get disturbed, attitude, perception, everything is getting disturbed. And finally, the destiny is also going to get disturbed. So Baba gives us this new vision towards the Self, you change and the world will change. If you cannot change, how can the world change? So if I want to be a part of the new world order, I need to bring a change in my own Self. Isn't it? Otherwise, there's going to be fear. And what is the fear? Fear is the messenger that comes to tell me that I am holding on to something. Whenever there is fear, that means I'm holding on to some belief, some old belief, and therefore I have to let go of that belief, let go of that something. If I won't let go, then there will be a lot of problems. So fear, the moment I have fear, it's a message. 
Otherwise, there is no fear. If I'm constantly changing with time, there is no fear. We are in, moving in, in intoxication. We are able to just be light and fly. There is no fear. But the moment I have fear of failure, of fear of criticizing, or someone criticizing, or fear of being challenged, that means I am holding on to something. So whenever this fear is there, the fear tells me I am holding on to something. Maybe wrong thoughts, maybe wrong beliefs, maybe wrong perceptions, maybe wrong attitudes. In today's world, we find children have fear. Why? Fear about the identity that they are holding about themselves. Fear about their studies. They constantly have this belief, I don't know whether I'll pass or not. So everyone is trying to motivate them. Why do you think this? Why do you generate such thoughts? You will be able to do it. Have this positive hope in you. So wrong thinking, which is creating a fear, and they're holding on to that wrong thinking. Isn't it? Wrong doings, and we are holding on to it. Can't let go of. Some people regret so much. This was not right. I did not right, and they're holding on to it. That's when people say, "Give up, give up." Okay, it happened. It was just a mistake. You did not do it purposely. So wherever there is wrongdoings, and I'm holding onto that consciousness, and I'm regretting, there is constant fear. Right? There is constant fear. So whenever this fear is there, I have to do a little bit of introspection and see what is it that I'm holding on to. Is it a wrong belief? Is it a wrong perception? Some wrong experiences? Some wrong thoughts? Attitudes? Feelings? Wrong behavior? What is it that I'm holding? That fear is the message we tell me, clear out. Give up, let go. The more easy I am able to let go, because after becoming Baba's children, this is the benefit, the greatest benefit that we have, that Baba has completely brought this change in our total inner mechanism. And so now, we have a complete new perception towards the Self. Baba has started from changing our belief system. You are not this body, you are a soul. So this first belief, this seed, when it is changed, the complete mechanism starts changing. Till we were not in knowledge, we were having this belief, I am so and so, I am this, I am that, I am that. So Baba said, you are a soul. You are a beautiful, pure energy. This belief changed everything. And when it starts changing everything, our destiny changes, we feel happy. Our destiny, which is the new world, when this consciousness has changed, the belief has changed, my world has changed. Instead of talking about the outside world, new world order, let me first change my inner world order. So my world changes completely. 
So fear is that message. And the need is to have the courage. Courage is the ability to let go of the belief that the fear is real, because fear is illusion. It is out of wrong understanding, wrong consciousness. So when that is put right, there is no fear. Baba's children have no fear, isn't it? Many times we are in difficult situations, challenging situations, and when we look anyone at with that soul vision, we behave, they just melt and they change completely. And nothing happens. And then we say, Baba's support was such, nothing happened. Otherwise, if I would not have been in knowledge, there would have been a lot of fear. Isn't it? There would have been a lot of fear. So now we have the courage, because Baba's support for us is such, that gives us so much of strength, that we are able to overcome that illusion of the fear, that the fear is real. Fear is not real, it is just an illusion that I've created because of the attachment. Right? Because if I don't have this courage, then what will happen? If I don't have the courage to let go of the fear, then there will be emotional attacks, heart attack. Isn't it? E motion, E plus motion, the energy in motion. Science says E stands for energy. The energy in motion. The energy in motion in my body. If that is disturbed, the consciousness, the disturbance of the energy of my consciousness, when the object of attachment, which, with, which I have identified myself, is threatened or moved, that is why we find in the world, heart attacks are increased. Why? The ego consciousness is increased so much that there are a lot of heart attacks. The energy gets disturbed, and when the energy gets disturbed, it creates spasm. Blockage starts. And because of that blockage, which goes on increasing. So in Madhuban, when we see that the CAD project, which is so successful, what do we do there? And the basic roots are changed in the lifestyle. When this consciousness is changed, I am not this body, I am a soul. I start giving freedom to myself, and I start giving freedom to others. So there is nothing that we are holding on to. And that starts releasing those spasms in the coronary arteries. And the blockages starts melting. And we find there is complete change. Without any bypass, without getting the stents, Put have opened up their arteries just by bringing this change. Four thousand patients, not one or two. So the energy in motion which gets disturbed. 
So we have to release it by giving the freedom. Let go. Let go. Let go. It is seen, if we don't let go, then we are going to become a slave of that emotion. How does a person become a slave? to negative emotions. Five A's. Five A's. First A is attention. Second A is attraction. Third A is attachment. Fourth A is addiction. And fifth A is atonement, where I have to pay the price, not negative emotion. How is this path created? I'll just give you an example. There is a young boy who has passed his university with the degree of becoming an architect. He's just finished his architect and come back from the university to home. And he's looking for some job. feels like joining some firm, firm of architects and starting his career there. I need to, I need to start something on my own. So he talks with his father. So the father says, yes, we can do something if you want to. But it is better to get an experience somewhere first. Then we can start. Right? So they're just discussing and sitting at home and what to do now after completing the studies. So some guests come to their place. Some guests come to their place. 